Welcome back to Vision Minor 3 Brain News. Today, we're talking about a consortium under the European Space Agency has designed and manufactured a high temperature FDM printer to be used on the International Space Station, which will take peak and ultimate printing to literally new heights. Project Imperial, as it's known internally, uses a conveyor belt in its current iteration, which means it theoretically can print parts to an unlimited length. The printer is compatible with numerous high temp engineering filaments, but none were specifically mentioned. Its capabilities were demonstrated, however, last month at their advanced manufacturing workshop, where attendees watched Project Imperial fabricate a 1.5 meter long bar. Now, if you know your way around high temp FDM at all, printing a 1.5 meter long bar in a thermoplastic like Peak or Ultem is not an easy task. The consortium responsible for Project Imperial consists of aerospace firms OHB and Azimut Space, both from Germany, Athlone Institute of Technology in the Republic of Ireland, and Be Very Creative, a Portuguese 3D printer provider. With this activity, we have overcome one of the main limitations of 3D printing, the build volume. While using a compact 3D printer capable of processing high-performance thermoplastics, explains Hugo Lafont, a material specialist at the ESA. This is a great achievement that will extend the application field of this on-demand manufacturing process. Now, Project Imperial follows the success of Project MELT, M-E-L-T, a proof of concept industrial FDM printer capable of operating in the microgravity conditions. This new printer project is focusing on furthering in-space manufacturing systems that can overcome constraints of today's 3D printing technologies. The end goal is to put Project Imperial on the ISS for on-demand fabrication and maintenance. This will help keep the ISS more sustainable in the long term and for future missions. Now, the ESA consortium had to adhere to numerous rigid technical requirements that many printers in the market would have trouble achieving. First and foremost, Project Imperial needed to be able to print high-performance engineering polymers like PEAK in microgravity conditions while maintaining Earth-like part qualities. Successfully printing PEAK here on Earth is pretty much an achievement in and of itself based on our experience and that of our customers. It's not the easiest thing to do. The next requirement was to be able to print large parts with unlimited lengths in one direction. Now, the Funmat HD Enhance is one of the main machines that we sell, and it's only got a 260 millimeter cube. Even the Pro 410 is maxed out at 406 millimeters on the Z axis. On top of all that, the printer had to be able to do this with strict power consumption limitations, and these peak parts needed to be ready to use right out of the build chamber, which means no post-processing facilities. Another key focus was for the printer to be efficient with raw materials, keeping waste materials at a minimum or at least entirely reusable. USC researchers already created a dynamic print bed for FDM that we actually covered in another news article that you can check out on our channel last week. Now, Project Imperial isn't the only space-ready additive manufacturing system out there. Uh, COSM Advanced Manufacturing Systems has been working on a metal EBM printer or electron beam melting printer from NASA designed for the Artemis program to allow for in-space automated manufacturing and component repair. Uh, man, I tell you, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on right now. Make sure you hit that like button. It helps us out and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Until then, have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.